What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a leak down test, uh, specifically on a Yamaha 701. Uh, you could bring this over to basically any Cowie motor or Yamaha 760, 701, 650. It's all pretty much the same. In this video though, I'm doing it on a I believe it was, yeah, O2 Superjet is what we have. Um, this motor came out of it. I have reason to believe that the crank seals are failing on it. So this motor is actually, in another video, going into a 2018 Superjet. But before I put it in there, I want to do a leak down test. And as you can tell, there's a bunch of oil in here. This is not supposed to be black. Um, it's just coated. And even though this looks pretty and it looks clean in here, it's actually just soaked in oil. And although it's supposed to be good that there is some oil in there for your Bendix and everything, I think that this is just blown out of crank seal. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Um, typically, you could just pull the flywheel cover and leave you know, just this in there. You could leave your flywheel, um, stator, and Bendix. I'm gonna remove it all just because of how much stuff is actually in there. and you know, oil wise, I want to clean everything. Um, but yeah, you could just pull that and then do the leak down test from there. And then I'll show you how to do that. For now, I'm going to take this out really quick. And uh, I could set up a tripod actually and explain that too in this video. All right, so hopefully you guys can see what's going on for the most part. Um, I'm just going to use an impact of Milwaukee, small one, but um, start off by course taking out this bolt now i take this bolt out all the way and the reason being is i've actually bent um the flywheel bolt before so i have the bent one that i've you know, bent in the past and i thread this one back in um you don't want to put it in all the way but you also want to like make sure you have a good amount of threads threaded in and then i have a custom tool made from a buddy of mine as a flywheel puller works awesome but, you know, the old school style like this, or I should say the actual style of a flywheel puller like this works perfectly fine. Um, so now all you do is I have c bolts that I use for some unknown reason, but you thread them in. Um, again, you want to get like two or three threads, nothing crazy, because if you do go in too far, you could hit um, your stator itself, damage the coils. So now your stator is no longer good, which would suck. Um, so these go in all, you wanna make sure that they're even for the most part, it doesn't have to be dead on, but make it so that it's pulling um, flat. So I always just rock it and I could tell like, this one should be backed out. Now you're good. Um, and again, I think stock bolt, well, at least this one was a 17 millimeter. Uh, the other one, I have no idea what it was that I just put in there. Then switch over to my different socket. And then keep your hands clear because this will suck if it hits you. And then just like that. So mine already popped. Um, sometimes it's stubborn. And if it is, what you could do is um, put tension on it with your impact then actually take a hammer and hit on the end of it right here, and the vibration could set it free. Um, I've had to do that in the past, which isn't a big deal. Then, once you've got that off, you can take your bent one or your original one. If it's original, just be careful with it. All the way out, then this should come right out. There is a keyway, um, don't lose that. sure why this flywheel is stuck. I hope it's not sheared. I know the RP ones are known to shear. Hmm. Strange. Uh, I did drop my key or flywheel key. If you look, it's not sheared straight through no metal shavings but if you look at the edge of this 
It looks like there is some type of metal shavings from something that have destroyed this. Not bad that it's non-usable, but wonder what it is. But we'll go in back to what the video is and show you. But you can see it. There's just shit literally dripping out of this now. How much oil? I mean, like I can bathe in it. So I would definitely say this crank seal is bad, but we'll do a compression or leak down test just to make sure. Sorry, pause the video on accident. Uh, give me a minute while I set that all up. All right, so for the next step of this, um, <clears throat> I did spray that with some simple grain just to show you, you know, a quick little clean that that was a lot of oil. Anyways, for the next part of this, you take your carbs off and um, what I end up doing is Went out to Home Depot and bought a two-inch, you know, uh, plumbing plug, I guess you could say. And I did uh, grind it to fit the manifold itself. But I used that to turn tight and seal up this. And then leave your spark plugs tight in the cylinders. And the other thing that I did was I took an old BMX inner tube and just cut holes in it to size. So now what you'll do is you'll take this and find your holes your marks i've done this before that's why there's already an imprint but you'll stretch that over where it needs to be and then you'll put your carbs back on and tighten it up so real quick i'm going to do that off video so it'll take up a lot more time and then i'll show you the next step all right now the carbs are snugged back down what i do is and this you know could be right could be wrong just how i've done it I use a um, pop-off pressure gauge as my pump. So now you hook this up to your pulse line. If you have dual pulse lines, block one off. Um, now this will take a long time so I can cut it. But what you do is take this, pump it up. People say five to eight BSI. Some others say eight to 10. I always put it at eight and it's supposed to sit you know, people say three minutes, others say five minutes. I've always let it just sit until I see it technically drop. I've set timers before. Most of the time, if you have a good seal, it shouldn't leak at all. Um, and if you have a bad seal, you'll notice it right away. The needle should drop. So, right now, so the camera's probably shaking like a little hell. I'm right about at eight. We'll lose some. So what you do is you set this down in one spot and you can either walk away or, you know, just look at the motor. What I tend to do is I'll take simple green. I'm going to move you guys, even though it's probably not going to be the same spot for you guys. Since I'm cleaning this motor in general, I'll take simple green or some type of bubbly liquid and spray it like this. And as you can see, it's bubbling up right there, which means we have a leak. It's actually bubbling up in two spots, right on the edge of the crank right there, and right there, pretty bad. So that's one leak that we found, which means it's gotta be split. But there can also be other leaks at the bottom here. Jugs around your carburetor manifold, or intake manifold, I should say. Your head can leak, your manifold, or exhaust manifold. This whole case can leak down here anywhere. Your rear crank, or crank seal, I should say. That one looks to be good. Uh, jugs look good. So yeah, you could just walk around your whole motor and spray it. And if something bubbles up, it bubbles up. And you know, that's a problem. Um, as of right now, Looks like that's the only thing, which I figured, to be honest. Um, and even though you did put these corks in and your seals, spray around all this because you could uh, just have a problem with a faulty seal that you made, not what the motor has. Um, so I always double check this. You know, my seals are all good. Oh, sorry. I don't know what the hell you guys were looking at. But as of right now, this motor looks good. Um, I've had it that uh, I couldn't see the liquid bubble up. 
but me being younger, my ears could hear it over like my dad when we were working on a motor. And it was actually the bottom of the cases where they like the clamshells go together behind the starter it was leaking on one of my other motors. So I pulled the starter and found out it was that. Thank God. Uh, well, I guess not thank God. It's not that big of a deal, but we just split the cases, cleaned the crank seals. Crank seals were still fairly good. Just must have been a nick in the cases, but yeah, that's how you do a leak down test. That's how you spot one. Um, so that explains why there's so much oil in here and grease. It was just leaking. And this could cause uh, bad carburetor tuning. So if you don't want to tune your own carbs, which I'm still learning, and if you pay somebody and you know they take all this time and money of yours to tune your carbs and they can't get it right, it could just be that you have bad crank seals or a bad crank or a seal somewhere and it's running lean. So don't always think it's your carburetors. Check it in your motor too. As you can see though, this hasn't dropped a substantial amount, but it has dropped maybe a PSI. You know, like I said, it depends on the angle that you're on with the camera. Um, for me though, it looks like it dropped a PSI. So again, you know, that was three minutes of us BSing, but if there's a leak like that, I'd rather fix it. You know, like I said, some people might say three minutes is fine, but when there's a distinct leak, you should just fix it and not push it off. But anyways, that's it for this video. Um, like I said, do it on your motors. You know, if you're pulling your ski apart this year for the winter, just try it. It's not going to hurt. Your motor's already out. Just do it. Um, and if you got a problem, fix it. You know, it'll keep you from having problems in your season. But, all right, thanks for watching this video. Like, uh, like subscribe, do whatever, comment. <laughs> I'm just doing this because it's my stuff. You know, I work on it all the time and figured it would help you guys.